So today we're going to be looking at a VBA document. This was sent to us by a reader who says they're also into malware analysis and wanted a little bit of help on it. So if we inspect our document, we can see in a hex editor that the header has PK in it. That means that this file is a zip and in Microsoft Word document format, that just means it's a newer type of document. So we can go ahead and open up Office Mouse Scanner and scan this document. Um, since it is a PK or a zip file, we need to inflate it first. So we inflate it with Office Mouse Scanner, which finds that there is, in fact, a VBA project a binary within it. So we can go to the folder that Office Mouse Scanner outputs it to, and then go ahead and throw that VBA project back into Office Mouse Scanner, and it will go ahead and extract the human readable version of the VBA script so that we can inspect what's inside of it. We do this just to just to see what's in there before opening up the document, just so we're not surprised or it has something crazy in there. And we can get a feel of what this document is going to do. So we can go ahead and open this up in just a text editor, uh, preferably something like Notepad++. And we can see that the, there's a whole bunch of spacing in here, um, spaced out all over the place, um, probably intentionally just to be annoying. So what we can do is there's a bunch of blank operation stuff that you can do in, in Notepad++. Um, you can get rid of leading spaces and trailing spaces and blank lines and replace characters and things like that. So you can do a whole bunch of text manipulation, and, and that's what we do here. Um, we don't want to do that one. We want to back up and do the replace lines. Um, specifically like repeated lines or blank lines, things like that. Um, again, there are a ton of options for things that you can do in here. And you pretty much just play around with the text until uh, you get to a place that you like. And here looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and just get rid of all the attribute stuff at the top. That's just nonsense. We don't need it. And then go ahead and change the language to Visual Basic. And that's looking a lot better. So we can <clears throat> go down through the through the code here and just kind of parse out the, the sub functions um, just make it a little easier for us to read again you don't have to do any of this um, for it to run the code will run just fine but just so we can take a look at it this, this helps a little bit and from looking at the code we can see that it's trying to extract two variables from the document so since it's trying to extract those variables from the document we actually need to go ahead and open it up instead of just running the VBA by itself to deobfuscate something that it maybe had hard coded. Um, this is actually going to inspect the active document for those two variables and pull out the strings that were in them and then probably decode them in some kind of way. So we go into the Visual Basic uh, developer. If you notice there, I just enabled the, the macros and let the, the malware run. Don't worry about it. Um, what we want to do is copy the VBA that we um, kind of prettied up a little bit and replace the VBA that they have. And then we want to find the document open sub function. That's the uh, function that will open as soon as the document is opened, as long as you enable um, macros and VBA. So we'll place a breakpoint within that document open and go ahead and hit go. And it pauses right there on our breakpoint. And what we do down the bottom here, in the bottom pane, is that we open up the me part of the, the locals, and what we're looking for is the variables, because the the variable that they're pulling out is from the active document dot variables. So if we expand that, uh, the item one and item two, we can see the labels that they were looking for, the DE9 and the 126. And we can also see the obfuscated uh, just text that's in there. So what this malware will do, or what this script will do, is go ahead and, I don't know why that keeps popping up, um, it'll go ahead and pull those strings out of those two variables and then run through uh, deobfuscation routines to, to pull whatever's in there back to legible text or commands or other scripts or things like that. So we can just kind of step through this program, and we notice here that it's jumping back and forth really quick. That's usually indicative of some kind of deobfuscation routine. So we just place a breakpoint after it and hit go. 
and then start stepping again. And here we can see that it deobfuscated a WMI function, this 132 underscore process. What that does is it, it, if you call that within VBA, it'll allow you to execute whatever you put after that. So here in a second, I'm sure the second variable is going to be deobfuscated to something else that that first variable is going to be able to launch. So we keep stepping and sure enough, we see that uh, there's a PowerShell with a window style hidden, typical, typical thing that we see in these type of documents. And if we just let the script go, we see that it launches PowerShell. And if we inspect that in Process Hacker, we can see that it, um, if we inspect the, the, the process command that actually launched that, we can just get all of that stuff that it just deobfuscated. Um, we could do this normally, just let the document run, and we would see that PowerShell launched, and we could get this command just the same. But it's nice to see the VBA and be able to step through it um, and make sure it's not doing anything else like have some sort of anti-analysis that launches something else to, to throw us off the real trail. So we can close out all this. Uh, we don't really need it anymore. This was just the, the launcher portion of it. And then we can go ahead and inspect this PowerShell document in Notepad. Um, and we open it up and we see there's a whole bunch of garbage in one of these variables. We can see that there's a function at the very top. It's very mathy looking, has some loops in it. So that's probably some sort of deobfuscation function. Down at the bottom, there's there's very little. Down there, all it does is deobfuscate that one variable into another variable, and then it has an add type at the bottom, and it looks like it's calling some sort of class and function. So if we open up the built-in IDE slash debugger that comes with Windows with PowerShell, um, you just go to your start menu, type ISE, and it'll come up, and you can paste that PowerShell script here. Um, and we can see that, you know, again, the add type down at the bottom, that's for inlining scripts and executing that inline script from within PowerShell. And you could break up this code a little bit more for the, the function Y171E, um, but you don't really need to. It's just a deobfuscation function, and we can just place a breakpoint after all that stuff to to get the final thing that's that's actually output, and that's the thing that we care about. So if we hit go, um, place in a couple breakpoints. Um, oh, we forgot to get rid of that PowerShell portion. That PowerShell attack hidden, you don't need that in the actual function. So we hit go, we hit our first breakpoint, and we can see that, you know, that, that variable should be deobfuscated and everything should be out of it. If we kind of hover over it, we can see a whole bunch of stuff in there. Um, so what we can do, <clears throat> is we can come down to the console and we can echo out that variable whoops not the not the script the variable um just type it out i guess uh this z24 c5732 that variable we can go ahead and redirect that um that output that we just put up on screen we can echo it out to a, a file on the desktop so that we can inspect it a little further and manipulate it as we need to so we'll just pump this out to, to our desktop, um, just extract it cs.txt, doesn't matter. Um, just some sort of text file, and now we're done with the, the ISE for PowerShell. Go ahead and throw that in line with the rest of our extracted stuff, and open it up in Notepad. Uh, we'll change the language to uh, C-sharp is what this looks like. Um, and you can kind of tell it's using C sharp. Just if you've seen C sharp before, there's these using statements and and the other syntax you see in here. Um, and that just comes with experience. And if you're not sure what it is, you can just look up some of these statements um, through Google, and and you'd be able to figure it out. But here we just it, the the code was very compacted, so we just um, sorted it out by semicolons and replaced all the the semicolons with semicolon and a new line. That way it's split it out into multiple lines. So we can open up um, Visual Studio. Visual Studio is an IDE um, you know, coding tool that you can use on Windows, very popular. And we just open it up and we have uh, an example, hello world, just C-sharp program. If you create a new C-sharp project, this is what you'll get. Um, just has a, a single class in there with a main that says, you know, prints out hello world. And that's all we need. 
and we're just going to paste all of that C-sharp stuff that we extracted below all of that stuff. And then any of the using statements that it has, we're going to paste those at the very top. And those are basically just includes or imports that you find in other languages. It's just importing libraries and things for the, for the script to use. And from the PowerShell script before, the thing at the very bottom, um, the YBA2983 uh, colon colon C193B with the uh, with the parentheses at the at the end, that was calling into a class and calling a specific function of that class, and that specific function is the C193B. So what we want to do is place a breakpoint within that function. And we want to do that because we're, we're going to mimic how the PowerShell uh, launched this c -sharp script. We're not going to launch it from PowerShell. We're actually going to launch it within an actual IDE so we can debug it and kind of see what it's doing. Now, to mimic that PowerShell launching of it, we need to actually call the, the class and the function. So we just type out the, the class and then the function with a semicolon at the end. And then after our, our example program prints out hello world, it'll go ahead and call into that function just like PowerShell would have. And we launch it up here, and then it should hit our breakpoint, and there it is. So we launch it up, we're in this the, the first function of the class now, just like PowerShell would have hit. And we also placed a breakpoint down in this other function, which is a deobfuscation. And we see that the first thing it deobfuscated was a string called AMSI.DLL. AMSI is an anti-malware uh, DLL that came with later versions of Windows. And what it does is any script that executes on your system, it'll throw all of the output through AMSI, and AMSI will inspect it. If AMSI finds anything bad in that, it won't allow the script to execute. So what this is doing is looking for AMSI on the system. AMSI on this particular system doesn't exist because it's Windows 7. On Windows 10 and, and later patches and things, AMSI does exist, and it specifically exists in Windows Defender. So if we want to inspect what this function would have done if it found AMSI, we can just comment out um, that first check because on our system it didn't find it, so it was comparing 0 to 0. And, you know, both of them were, were null, so it never actually went in there. But on ours, we can change that to true and start stepping through it. We see the next thing it um, deobfuscates is AMSI scan buffer. AMSI scan buffer is the API within AMSI that receives the output of text from scripts and inspects it. So with this, we see at the top that it's importing specific DLLs and specific entry points in them. So the, the gist of this whole thing is it tries to load the AMSI library, if it succeeds, then it tries to get the proc address for AMSI scan buffer. If it finds AMSI scan buffer, then it will unprotect that memory and then patch the bytes that are in there to go ahead and effectively bypass the AMSI scanning. And that's the AMSI scan bypass. If, again, if AMC is not found on the system, it'll just bypass all of that and go into what we see now where it, it creates a temporary folder and where it's going to download a file and then we eventually get the download URL this cannabis property and, and an executable that is trying to download it'll try to download that through a new web client and then if the executable succeeds in downloading it'll go ahead and start that process uh, we don't really have networking turned on here so it, it fails but this is this is more of a tutorial in analyzing these first stage downloaders and obfuscated VBA PowerShell C sharp rather than following the the remote access Trojan or the banking malware or ransomware that'll come later. And you may ask why we go through all this. Uh, we could have just run this in a controlled environment and monitored the network and got a indicator of compromise and IOC. You know, the the IOC in this case would be the final URL at the end that downloads the executable. We could have gotten that in a few seconds by just running the file and monitoring the network. But malware analysis and reverse engineering, what you really want to do is dig into these things so that you can learn more about the processes and techniques that people are using to try and bypass protection mechanisms or to fool malware analysts and get this malware on systems. If you don't, if you just chalk it up to, 
well, this is just magical hacker code running in the background that eventually downloads something. You may miss important details. This malware could have easily had some anti-analysis techniques that if it found analysis tools on the system, whether running or just on disk, it may have output a different URL. It may have output no URL at all, or it may have output a URL to like a benign program. We don't know. But by going through this code and deobfuscating it manually, going through and debugging it, making sure it's not doing anything funky, we can rest assured that this was in fact, you know, just deobfuscating several layers of, of scripting code to eventually get to an executable to download. So if you all have any questions about this malware or any other malware, hit us up at ringzerolabs.com. There is a written article for this, um, this uh, video, as well as a download link to the malware where you can download this and try it out on a VM of your own if you'd like. Again, hit us up, ringzerolabs.com. Happy hunting.